All right, I would like you all to give me a, put your hands together and welcome to the stage our next presenters, Nix and I'm, Charlie. Charlie, I am so sorry. Hey, uh, yeah, so uh, today we are talking about uh, uh, hacking corporate banking for fun and profit. So uh, uh, introducing myself, I'm a full-time bug bounty hunter for uh, for Synac. Uh, uh, I also recognized uh, uh, in 2021 as uh, an, as one of the legend hacker. And uh, I was, sorry? Okay. Uh, I'm also, I'm also fo uh, founder of uh, B-Sites Ahmedabad. And uh, uh, I am advisor at uh, riskprofiler.io. Charlie. Hey guys, my name is Charlie Waterhouse. Um, I am a security analyst and was on the back side of this helping triage these phones as they came in. And we kind of worked together to go a little further and figure out some stuff on this. Um, I have spent non-traditional and pen testing background. I spent 22 years as an airline flight attendant, international uh, manager and speaker and translator. In the meantime though, I've also done over 2,400 engagements uh, based on OWASP and reviewed about 25, 30,000 reports from a lot, some of you guys out here uh, that have seen me on the back end of that. Um, I work with a lot of our large corporate clients to help them understand the flaws. And as I like to say, translate the geek side to non-geek so that the guys who are not technical understand what we're looking at. So to start, we're gonna give you guys a little bit about this. Um, during the bounty hunt on this, we were kind of looking at, this was a private program for a large, large bank. Um, and the scope was their corporate banking application. This is the back end where they're doing transfers and setting up stuff. Um, after exploring a bit, we found that there was a third party application that was running and uh, claimed to be used by 60% of the banks. So this was we're like, okay, now we can start digging a little more. The program has three roles. We have a maker, verifier, and checker. The maker initiates a transaction. Uh, the checker ensures everything's in place and ready to go. Verifier is the final checkbox. And so the app has corporate groups. Each was managed by different branches, and they're all separate and not linked to each other, recognized by GCIF. Now, one of the things we found out from my end when we started looking, louder, louder, always. Okay. So when we started looking, we found that the GCIF is actually kind of a unique thing. I, we started poking around. This is a Google patent for linking your bank accounts together. So let's say that you have a large corporate bank, you have a loan that's for your house, for your car, for your bank, for your credit cards. They all link you through your GCIF. So it's your universal identifier across different divisions within the same bank. So let's keep that in mind when we're going through this. And next slide. So we can see what each role looks like with the maker, the verifier, and the authorizer. These are pretty standard and look pretty similar. So at this point, um, Nick, so you want to take it over where you were at on this? Yeah, so uh, so client has given uh, some uh, SLAs where, when they are going to fix all these vulnerabilities. So starting from critical, uh, which which is which has been given that uh, they will fix in like 15 days, uh, high up to 30 days, medium up to 90 days, but they, they they never followed it and they fix all the vulnerabilities after one year. So. Uh, so getting to know the application, uh, it's using servlets, it's kind of a single page app, which we tend to kind of go, eh, not much there. Um, the maker role has administration uh, application module on it. And so we kind of noted that. And that uh, each role has custom permissions, but the maker role does have that admin, um, but it doesn't have all the admin permissions. Um, there's a servlet path for the front office uh, that we see here and the admin path what we kind of want to focus on, though, is these widget IDs and the event IDs, because these are going to come critical as we go through, and we're going to use them through those uh, modifiers. Several pages with keywords that we saw with that event ID, and then we had the modifiers to go in with it, and then the front office was in the web portal spot, and input validation was required to get in. Thanks, well. So there was, uh, there was two sides of it, this application. One is uh, front end, and the other is uh, the back end. Backend is not really a backend, but they have given uh, custom permissions on it. Uh, the, it is a kind of very large application, so uh, they haven't provided much much of uh, uh, like uh, permissions on it. So uh, 
so when there was a uh, demo uh, sorry so so i started recon on the application uh, i found that uh, they are running uh, a third party application and this third party application was a th uh, demo only so i couldn't find much information available on the uh, and i don't want to call them and uh, uh, have a, a demo set up for myself uh, so i go ahead and uh, decided to review their uh, javascript files uh, javascript uh, so basically uh, this application has two event ids uh, two uh, two uh, parameters event ids and uh, widget widget ids so uh, what i did i uh, and uh, and there was there was one more parameter gc uh, gcif which uh, charlie just ex explains that uh, is used to identify the bank customer all across the world so uh, what I did, I uh, used a, a grab script to uh, uh, figure out all the event IDs because what happened is uh, if you want to surf any functionality in this application, you have to change the uh, event IDs uh, uh, in the in the parameter and you will get, uh, uh, if, you, if you have access to that uh, particular functionality, you will be uh, uh, able to load it. So uh, what I did, I just... Uh, grab all the uh, event IDs uh, through through a grab script and uh, uh, and and each uh, there, there was uh, like common.js uh, file but uh, in each page you load uh, the G event IDs you will get a new uh, JavaScript file and it has a it it will contain a new um, event IDs uh, for uh, next for maybe maybe for the next functionalities so uh so this is like a uh, this is like a a few uh, event ids that i found uh, from uh, just just to start from and uh, after I, uh, I after i go load these uh, event ids in the application i uh, found like more than uh, 500 uh, modules running on this application so so starting from uh, the our first findings uh so it, it, it's an acceleration from uh, authorizer to admin role. So what they are doing that uh, the maker role has an admin button. So uh, when when I click the admin button, it will redirect me to the admin admin panel of it. But uh, the admin panel also do not have much permissions available. Uh, just uh, a couple of uh, couple of uh, modules are loading. So what I. So uh, when I click click the uh, click that uh, uh, admin role, uh, what I found that uh, they are generating, uh, they are basically uh, checking that if uh, this uh, role has uh, dual dual code uh, dual role available on their uh, on their uh, um, on their uh, uh, privilege. I mean, the, on their like yeah, like if if I go through uh, authorizer, it will check that uh, if uh, if this uh, role has uh, dual permissions available or not. Uh, if dual permissions are available, it will uh, assign that uh, admin panel to me. So uh, uh, what uh, what I did, I just uh, load this URL from uh, from the uh, uh, from the uh, authorizer role, and uh, it will uh, allow me access to uh, the admin panel. But there was no module was loading. There was just uh, they were just maybe just uh, hiding the modules. Uh, uh, from the admin application. So what I did, I just used the event IDs, uh, put the event IDs in uh, in the uh, parameter, and try to load uh, try to load different uh, modules uh, from this generated uh, uh, admin session from the authorizer role. So uh, I I did it one by one uh, from the uh, uh, starting from the user list report. So uh, when I when I load the event IDs. Uh, I found that uh, the a page is uh, go, uh, a template page is loading, and while uh, clicking on submit, I was able to access all their uh, user uh, from the from an authorizer role. Uh, so uh, y using those event IDs, and there are some frames URLs as well. So the frames URLs are connecting uh, uh, connecting to the event IDs only. So uh, 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 whatever you load, uh, even the uh, even the frames or uh, event IDs, you will get the same information. And uh, uh, just uh, by loading one by one uh, event IDs, you will actually able to uh, access all of their admin panel from an authorizer or verifier role. So it was just hiding hiding the uh, hiding the uh, uh, modules, uh, not actually authorizing the uh, user. Uh, 
for for that particular role so this is the this is the second finding uh, i found like uh, this is again uh, i'm uh, i was using uh, 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 event ids to load up uh, to load up particular uh, particular uh, function so what i did i uh, using gs uh, gs link finder i uh, caught up with a particular page uh, limit setup main page dot gsp and uh, when i load this page i was uh, actually able to uh, get a uh, get a uh, uh, get a page where uh, i was able to uh, set up their uh, customers uh, whatever whatever uh, withdrawal or whatever daily limit they want to set for each customer so uh, i can set it for uh, their all customers as well so uh, once i uh, click and uh, approve this uh, they just uh, simply uh, set up their uh, limit to all the all the customers they have you missed the meme here yeah last minute prep sorry guys missed the meme there's supposed to be a very surprised cat there so yeah so uh, so when when i uh, so there was another another part of this uh, uh, this uh, functionality that i didn't I didn't uh, tell you that when you once you submit the uh, submit the uh, uh, submit any request it will actually go to the uh, go to uh, uh, as an authorizer so you have to authorize that request in order to get it approved so uh, so these ids are uh, these event ids are quite simple so as you say, as you can see if you want to uh, weave, a, weave any page or modify any page or uh, authorize any page you just have to modify a simple value like view modify auth uh, and just just have to uh, just have to uh, alter those values to uh, set set this up and uh, uh, once once you uh, load this uh, let's say you modify something and uh, uh, you end up uh, in authorization page and uh, you just have to modify the auth id and uh, once you uh, once you go to the auth id you will uh, you will have to i mean uh, they they display uh, uh, the value you just modified you just have to uh, authorize that value to uh, have it set up for all the users so so uh, since i uh, since i modified a value from here uh, I just uh, modify. I just uh, go to the uh, authorization page, and there was a request pending that uh, uh, that uh, this this particular thing is modified. You just have to authorize it or unauthorize uh, unauthorize it. So just for uh, j since since it it was client application, and I don't want to uh, uh, impact it uh, much. So I just uh, use the unauthorized button to simply reject the request which I uh, just uh, sent for modification since it, it was for all the customers so just just for a uh, safer side maybe they are using a, a prod uh, behind uh, and showing us the this is a staging environment only so uh, so from from uh, from uh, authorized page i just click on the uh, authorizer id which was uh, uh, which was which, which i just modified and uh, uh, on this page uh, there was two two things uh, authorize reject you uh, if you if you authorize it will set up for all the all the all their customers if you reject uh, it will uh, instantly reject and uh, do not modify the, those limits to all the customers so i just uh, rejected it and and simply uh, got rejected so uh, in the finding three uh, the uh, it, it was a customer onboarding um, idr uh, uh, again it was uh, it was through the event ids only and uh, um, i found an uh, interesting event ids uh, from the from the js that uh, customer set a view page so i thought uh, i thought the, i might i might be able to uh, i might be able to uh, set up the customer uh, customers uh, information from this page so uh, what I did, I just go to the uh, uh, servlet and I modified the uh, event IDs to uh, customer set up, set up uh, view main page. And uh, what I uh, and uh, there was uh, and uh, uh, when when I loaded, uh, it was actually loading that uh, customers uh, uh, customers in information. And uh, 
uh, there was there was one more pattern that is uh, action. Uh, if you uh, if you want to modif uh, modify or authorize or something, you can use action or either you can just mod uh, you just put the value in the uh, uh, event IDs itself. So once once you that uh, once you got the uh, event uh, once you got the uh, that customer, you you, ha you just have to uh, click on it and. Uh, uh, and uh, you can mo uh, you can modify whatever uh, the group name or or you can uh, even uh, remove the uh, remove the uh, co co corporate id from uh, from that particular customer so uh, once you remove the co corp corporate id that from that customer actually all their accounts got get unlinked and uh, um, they uh, their even their customers do not have uh, do not able to uh, access their account information so while while uh, so uh, again um, once i once i sub submit this request i have to authorize this uh, so i just modified the uh, uh, event id to auth page and uh, uh, once i go there i just have to authorize or reject this uh, in order to uh, approve it for that co uh, dot that particular customer so uh, while 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 uh, while doing this, all of the, all of this, I also found found that uh, uh, the, cust the customer setup page was also vulnerable to uh, accesses. So uh, what I did, I just put the uh, put the access payload in uh, their uh, uh, their um, relationship manager uh, name, and uh, uh, whenever they see uh, the relationship manager uh, name on their uh, bank uh, bank uh, account. Uh, the uh, the accesses payload will pop up and uh, i can uh, able to grab their uh, cookies just from uh, just straight from their uh, uh, their uh, uh, bank uh, bank account so uh, so the as I said, that uh, there was a uh, there was two side of this application one is uh, the front front office and one is the back office the front office uh, contains the wish, wish, widget uh, widget servlet and uh, the back of back office contains uh, uh, contains the uh, uh, another another uh, servlet so uh, so what i did i just uh, i just uh, sort all the widget controller uh, and uh, try I st I start uh, fudging for uh, sql sql injection vulnerabilities what i found that uh, there was uh, one parameter that is called dir uh, it was giving me 500 internal server error while supplying a single single quote so i, I so uh, i thought i mean there there was a change in response so i thought uh, let's try some boolean and blind conditions so uh, when i try, when i started uh, fuzzing for uh, boolean and blind based i found that uh, the, there was a boolean based uh, blind is working and uh, the database is Oracle, and uh, I I just uh, I just use uh, SQL map to dump all their uh, all their uh, databases, and uh, I was able to first uh, I was able to get uh, all of their uh, all of their uh, database systems. So. Uh, since since i was able to uh, since i was able to escalate the uh, escalate the uh, authorizer role or very very fire role in the uh, admin panel so i just used an authorizer role and uh, uh, i tried to weave the uh, customer uh, customer weave se uh, customer setup view page and um, i found that the customer uh, name at customer customer underscore name was vulnerable to uh, again boolean based blind and uh, uh, what I do, I just uh, went ahead and uh, uh, started uh, started the uh, SQL map on it, and uh, I was able to uh, dump all their uh, DB again. So uh, I got like I said, like uh, this was fun and profit. So I got all the fun, and I got all of profits as well. So. So later, uh, after an year, they come and they said that uh, 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 we have fixed all the issues. So what they did, they just removed the corporate admin power module from the application, and they think that it's a uh, fix from their side. And on the on the on the front end, they 
they come f after another one year and they put the uh, Cloudflare uh, across their application and they think that it's fixed again. So that's... Yeah, so looking at it from my end, from the triage end, you have to ask what, the clients always ask us what what it's the matter. Um, if you come in, you do a cross-site scripting, you pop a alert that just says one, the CEO is gonna go, okay. What we had to kind of go in and explain to them is not only do we manage to have almost full admin access from any role across your system, we managed to also dump your entire SQL database and showed them a row and a column that we pulled. And so we can also take care of that. And then in addition, anybody who has a relationship manager listed, I can now get their creds. That's all these high value clients. Um, when we see these relationship managers in our banking app, imagine that just stole your ID. That's where they start coming in and they go, uh oh. And yeah, that's when you want to be that guy going, this is what I found you. Um, and so getting their attention with this, when this hit, they were paying a lot of attention once they saw clearly what the impact was that basically Nick's ran rough shot over them. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what we're looking at with bad session management. So anything else to add, Nick's? No, I guess that's, that's all for a month. All right. Thank you guys. Uh, hopefully this was kind of informative and you guys learned something.